Look, I used to be a pro boxer. Uh, over here in Colorado, we have a lot of police encounters where they discriminate black people. For a fact, they shot my homie like six times. I had to stand my ground. Like sometimes I was like, let them do their thing. Like I, I wouldn't let them bully me, but like, there was, I went two months pissing blood. Hold on. So we're right here with the, oh, real teeth, with the real. All right, hold on, hold on. How, how, how? Can't get nervous now, you the rapper. It was the deal, it was Parkside Baby Plus, you know the deal from HP LA, right here in the streets of Denver, Colorado, with my dog, the real MVP TV. Like I told you, bro, I'm always ready to wear, like, I'm always in the studio, I'm always at my nine to five, bro. Look, this is because of the trap room right here. This is my little brother, bro. What's up, hey, buddy? Maje. Lloyd. I just be, like, rapping some new shit, like, to him. Look, let me show you something that I, I wrote, like, real quick before you got here. <coughs> With us in a second, just so you can learn your lesson. What made you first start getting into music? To be real true, I've been rapping since I was young, like probably like seven or eight years old. I was the type of kid that like, like they'll put a song, and I'm like, nah, the music video. I'm trying, I'm trying to read the lyrics, and my goal is always to learn the whole song and like karaoke style, just by the lyrics. You feel me? And I was like, like damn, I want to rap that fast. Like I can never catch on to those lyrics. Rather like put the song back, and then I started making remixes and. It was like in fourth grade when I got like suspended for like a few days in a school called Highland Elementary back in Illinois. I was talking about like bitches and, and drugs and guns, you feel me? I'm just like a nine, nine year old or something like that. My teacher, she's like, what are you doing? Like she caught me right there, like still writing the song in my desk. Take me out, bro, call my parents, pick me up. I was out there for like a few days, no lie. Y'all know I gotta have a Mexican flag up, you feel me? A Mexican, a proud Mexican. Look, I used to be a pro boxer. Feel me? I got some bells, some state bells, some trophies. Why you didn't stick with it? It feels like you could only do one thing, either boxing or music. You feel me? Injuries too, bro. Like I broke my nose, bro. My eye. Look at my eye. It broke right here. It just takes a lot of dedication, bro. You can't. What made you choose the music over the uh, boxing? I get to just speak my life. I'm. A, I guess I'm a very talkative person sometimes, and sometimes I could be quiet. But nowadays I just put it into my music, and like with this whole um, boxing and music shit. Like, bro, I'm making music, I'm not getting knocked out, I'm not getting hit, I'm not getting concussions, injuries, all that crazy stuff. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do what works better. Music's taking off, I'm just going to go this route for a little bit. If something was to happen, like, I always got a plan B, you feel me? At that age, bro, shit, I ain't going to lie, at that time we was going through some struggles, like eviction notices and everything. It was kind of crazy, because... Um, at the time, um, we got evicted from like this house where we grew up, kind of. We started moving like from apartment to rental to rental to rental. And then like, we, we, we just get evicted. Like we got evicted like three times real talk. And then, uh, so all that was going through. I ain't never had a ride to school like in the snow and shit. So me and my homies would just click up and we'll always just start going that way, like to school. Fights every day, low key, like just the fights. Uh, the the kids at a young age already like banging you feel me it was always banging on me and too like like i had to i had to stand my ground like sometimes i was like let them do their thing like i i wouldn't let them bully me but i had to just fucking just stay quiet about some things and then some other things i had to stand my ground for them, to be real with you that's why i started boxing like even more I started grinding more so nobody could really fuck with you yeah i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm train hard in them that for world watch. That's how it'll be. Like it wouldn't even be like I'ma fight competitive. It'll be like I'ma f that for world. And then it became a dream of mine to become a pro athlete. Like it wasn't even boxing. It was like I wanted to be a soccer player or a boxer. But I chose boxing to be real with you. A year ago I, I I did that like a year and a half ago. So I was like, what's next for me? Like do I want to keep doing this? Like I accomplished my my dream as a child. You feel me? You know like when the teacher gives you a paper in, in kindergarten, she's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I put right, I want to be a pro athlete. Like, I didn't want to be a teacher, fight, attending, none of that. <laughs> I wanted to be a pro athlete. At, at some point, I was like, nah, I don't really care. But look, I started getting hit, like, over here on my kidneys, bro. I started pissing blood for, like, months. Like, there was, I went two months pissing blood from from boxing, man. And then, like, I came back just to get a concussion. Look, I ain't going to lie. It was like, I had him boxed for, like, three months, right? And I'm like, I feel like I need to spar somebody. I need to, I need to, I need to just put my hands on somebody. You feel me? I was like, I hit on my coach. I was like, let's set up a sparring for tomorrow. I went to to spar. I got hit. I got hit in my liver. Like I ain't really feel it. I ain't feel it. Like so I was like, I, go, I need to go use a, like the rest. I'm gonna take a bad piss. But it was all blood. And now I go back to the video. I'm looking at the part where I got hit. I'm like, it don't make sense because I never felt anything. But I went back on the video and you could even hear that. Shit, how it pops. Mm, damn. Like yeah. you ruptured just. 
Yeah, like it ruptured. Like I had to go to the hospital. I was damn, damn near bleeding for like two months. I, I figured it was because like my body was just kind of like chilling. And then I just go straight to war, you feel me? So it was like my body was in like stiff muscles and all that. You gotta have some talent to get a belt. You gotta do that for like 10 years, bro. Do you ever miss it? What? The ring? I miss it right now, bro. Like I had a fight December 2nd. That was my comeback fight after a year. Fool didn't show up to the fight, bro. I started myself everything, bro. Fool didn't even show up. It's crazy. Mm, but that's about it. Like when I was a kid, things changed. I wanted to be a pro athlete, but when I did that, I was like, it didn't really how how I envisioned it when I was a kid, you know? So I was like, I'm gonna set new goals. So I just became an artist, like, officially. Just started rapping and sh rapping my life. I ain't trying to lie. What is that feeling to, like, finally obtain something you've been working for for years and it's not really what you expected it to be? I ain't gonna lie, it's kind of, like, tough because you start thinking every single day, like, five years ahead. Like, if you really got your sh together, like, you start thinking, like, damn, five years ahead, like, where do I see myself? And I'm like, I definitely don't see myself like being a rich millionaire holding these boxing belts or none of that. So it started like all falling down on me, like depression, you feel me? Like, like I suffered bad ment mental health, but it's all good. Like, like it, it's brought me to where I'm at right now, you feel me, with this music sh But it's pretty much it. Like, like when you start seeing everything pile up and it's not what it is, like, low key, bro, a lot of things go through your mind. Like, a lot, like, I don't even know, like, I don't even know how to put words together. Over here, I feel like there's a lot of more, uh, like, mass shootings type over here you said mass shooting yeah like there was a shooting like 30 minutes away from here in boulder like a year ago two years ago some dude went into king supers i don't know if y'all heard about that king supers and shot a whole bunch of people right there bro and then like two weeks ago over there in colorado springs like an hour ago uh, uh, an hour away they shot this uh gay club or something like that the thing about it right here is be reckless i think people's reckless everywhere but i don't know if, but i'd be seeing that People go inside the mall and just shoot somebody right there inside the mall. As a matter of fact, they shot my homie in front of a club like six times, bro, to be real. A lot over here in Colorado, we have a lot of police encounters with, uh, like, where they discriminate black people. Like, they be beating on, on them and everything, killing them, you feel me, like, beating them to death. And about four or five months ago, I was at the club. As a matter of fact, I just went to go use the restroom and shit. And then some fool just came up to me, started, like, trying to fight. And then we took it outside, you feel me? Some went down and then like the cops like instead of trying to calm anything down they just shot my cousin like my my i call him my cousin but that's my that's like my brother for real my homie my close homie they shot they shot him six times right in front of me like like literally right in front of me bro i didn't even know how to act out i hit my my cousin hits me on my, my my cousin on curfew so he's like i get a little i get to extend my curfew today so he's like he's like meet me in downtown meet me in downtown and, and i was like like i was right here chilling i was right here sleeping and shit. i was like I couldn't say no, you feel me? So I went down to the club. I was like, let me go in to use the restroom. We wasn't even supposed to turn up. I go in and I see the homie working bartender. So he hooks me up with a few shots and shit. So he comes from behind, pulls my sweater. He starts like talking all this shit about me being a Mexican. I told him meet me outside. And then uh, my cousin's like, what took you so long? I'm like this fool like trying to fight me, trying to press me. When we go outside, bro, he never came out. So we about to leave. My, my, my cousin's introducing me to his homies and shit. And then I see that fool, so I walk away, like, out of the conversation. I walk away, go up to that fool, like, I literally just sock him out. My cousin comes through. We, we low-key, like, sock that fool out. Like, the cops immediately started shooting, like, like they kind of walked, like, three, four steps. Started shooting right away on some crazy shit. Six yeah. times, six times, bro. And I was a little buzzed, so I didn't even know what the to say. Like, I was just screaming to the cops. Low-key, I was trying to fight the cops, bro, to be real with you. I was telling them why would you shoot them, like, he had his hands up and everything. This is how life be over here with discrimination. And he's a tall, he's a t tall black male, so you already know how that went. Well, you said you go through like a lot of mental health things, depression and stuff like that. In our in society, like men don't really acknowledge their mental health or their issues yeah. and stuff. Like with you, what was it like your experience and like dealing with that? Like uh, I had a little back back in the day, like three years back, and that's when I, everything started piling up. Like I got with her, I stopped boxing. We, stumbled, we had a few stumbles, and I was like, okay, like that's motivating me to go chase my dreams, and this is to see me chasing my dreams, so I, she, I know she's gonna want me back, watch. That's pretty much how it went, but then I was like, like, am I doing this to please somebody, or am I really doing this shit? I love it. And that's when I started realizing, like, I think I'm just doing it because people would be telling me, like, do it, do it, but it ain't really something I love. Like, mental mental issues started kicking in, like, like, like bad depression, Fucking, I know that like 
Shadow Thompson and shit like back in the day. But like the way I see it nowadays is like there's kids out here like like in the hospital like wishing they had one more day of life. But somebody that's out here healthy, like wanna take their life, like you feel me? Like they wish they could trade lives. So I just started grinding, bro, like just trying to motivate everybody like me, like I tell people use me as a motivation because I like I try to be as humble as I can and and teach people the right ways and everything, you feel me? A lot of people don't really un don't understand like what depression is. They just think it's like you're just sad, get over it, keep going. What is it really like when you're deep in that state and going through what you're going through? Fuck. I don't even know how to answer that. Because there's a lot of shit I've I done like, to deal with that shit. And it's like, I feel like that shit shouldn't be said, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I don't know how to answer that question. Well, it was just affecting me because like, like, like in my job, I couldn't even focus. I was like, I don't even want to do this. Like, I'm not even learning, cause I have a cooking job. I wasn't even learning. I was setting things up, and then like I would get into arguments with my coworkers. I'm like, what? The fuck? Like I'm, I'm being a f up everywhere. Like, like what the f is going on? Like nobody, f nobody's f with, with what I'm doing. Like I'm just fucking shit up everywhere. When like I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna drive my car into a tree, bro. Like I didn't even care. Like I'm like, like I'm fucking things up. I might as well just, you feel me? I was just going through some shit, bro. So I moved here like. Six years ago, right? 2016, 2015, I got with this little kid. Immediately, like, I moved down my mama's, my, my parents' crib. Like, at 16, I, just, I was just going to, like, I was couch hopping with my ex. I was like, hey, let your auntie, like, ask her if I could stay the night. And then I was just going, I didn't even know Colorado like that. I would have to, like, really, like, look into it. I didn't even have service, no money. I would get paid, like, I had this little job only for Saturday and Sundays as a, as a busser. I would get paid like seven dollars an hour, so I would make like a hundred bucks a week, bro, to be rich. And then uh, that's the only money I had to to really get around and shit. With my ex, he was always a year a year older than me. He was seventeen. My parents they put a wanted like like they're they're searching for me, and then the cops low key found me. They took me back home and shit. Immediately as as soon as the cops took me back home, like I would say like 10, 15 minutes later, bro, I was already back in the streets, bro, trying to go find my ex. Hmm. And then, uh, so as, as soon as she turned 18, that was just my goal. I was like, I'm gonna be with this until she turns 18 so she could get us an apartment. I got an apartment with her. Uh, I was 17 and shit. And then after that, bro, we just, she's been, she's been uphill and downhill ever since, bro, to be real with you. It's a good, it was a good and bad thing. When I was like, uh, 17 years old, it was when I won that big belt, I mean, the big trophy right there. Um, it was the Golden Gloves tournament. And then like, I was 17 years old. And they told me like, like you want to stay in, in your level or you want to boost up a level? And I told my coach like, let's level up. Like, so if you level up, you fight people that are like 18 or 40 years old. Like I seen them at the roster. Like I went and waited in. Everything 17 year old waiting. At that time I was training right here. I was living right here in my dad's house, just training right here in this bag. This is all I had, literally. But I didn't have treadmills, nothing, just a bag. And then I seen the roster was like 25 year old, 27 year old, 22 year old. Bro, I took every single one out. When we when I waited in with the with the finalists and the finalists, he was like telling all his family like, I'm about to beat this little kid up and blah blah. 43 second knockout, for real, knocked him out. What was that feeling of like just putting somebody out cold? No, bro, like I like I didn't even like I was just like. Like, I seen him drop, but it was like, to be real with you, I can't even explain the feeling, bro. Right away, I just wanted to tell my homies, like, bro, I knocked this fool out. At the time, my little brother was, like, incarcerated, so I was waiting for him to call me so I could just tell him, bro, I won, I knocked this fool out. The the scariest, sad moment was, uh, like, a year after that, like, I was boxing. You know, like, when a southpaw and orthodox me, like, they always crash, head bumps and everything. And this fool came in at the same time as I came in, and his head hit my whole face, bro. Broke my tooth, like. It, like cracked from the whole top. Ever since that day, like, like it's just a little t hard for me to talk and shit. That's that's what people don't know, but it's true. Concussions, bro. One one wrong punch, bro, could like kill you, bro. I know you've seen like all the news lately. Like a lot of boxers been dying back and forth. That in the back of your head, like, I can die today, or is it like, what's the mentality you gotta have to just go out there? And to be real with you, um, I don't really have that mentality. It's like. Like, I don't, the whole dying part or, or taking that risk, I don't even, like, that's out the window, you know? Like, I just don't like losing, you feel me? Like, I be thinking too much about what people people gonna, gonna say sometimes, which that's my fault, you feel me? But sometimes, like, that's the way it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you wanna get money and sell, and sell tickets, like, 
you got to give the people what they want to see, you know? So I just ain't trying to lose. I just be rapping like if you really know me, know me. Back when I used to go to clubs and all that, I be telling my homies like, hey, let's just freestyle, like put beats. Like I'm, I'm not trying to hear no music. I'm just trying to hear beats and, and we just be freestyling, rapping. And then when we leave the club, we'll be talking about our experience. Like, hey, let's rap about what the f just happened. I just met this little bitch and she was this and this. That's basically how I started. And then I started hopping on BandLab. It's a little app on, on, on the phone. Just put my headphones on and start recording shit until um, somebody came through and told me they had a recording studio and shit. So I went over there. And that was my first time like recording in a real studio. And it wasn't even like that. It was like in it. He had this little studio, a mic in the middle of the room. I had a whole bunch of people sitting, bro. You can hear them in the background and shit. Like when I'm making music, you can hear it in my songs. I started like elevating little by little, you feel me? Like going to like a better studio, better engineer. Was some of the stuff you was rapping about when you was seven, you was talking about you was rapping about some crazy shit. Was mm -hmm. that shit that you were seeing growing up? Low key a little bit, but most of it was just like like low key kinda like nonsense, like like about kind of hating my teachers and stuff like that. <laughs> to be real with Typical you, kids. yeah, because that's that's one of the reasons why they suspended me. Because I was just talking about how I hated my teacher. You and just things. talking shit. Yeah, things I was gonna do supposedly. You feel me? Like 